weeks of talking to overcome that skepticism. But I can assure you 570 was proposed by the Pew Foundation, who I'm not going to criticize, but they came in without doing any research and did a cookie cutter bill that everybody jumped on because you know? it sounded good. I know. And I, I, there were good parts to it that would have helped. We never bothered with those. There were bad parts that did not require implementation. They were changing, they were softening sentences. They were increasing the uh, burden and the elements necessary to prove certain crimes. And that part I struggled with, but I thought the good outweighed the bad, and then we never did the good. So it turned out to be a bad bill. Sometimes um, whenever you sit here and you get these things, I'm all for somebody getting rehabilitated, and I like, I actually like that idea, and I've supported things in the past, but then when somebody's out, then the next thing you know, they may do, they commit another crime, and they cross the center line and they're on that, and they have, and then they kill somebody, or if it's, maybe they get out and then, you know, they get pregnant, then the next thing you know, we have another kid or two in the foster care system. I mean, so there's a lot of extra cost to, so it's key. Everybody's going to get out at some point, unless we built 50 new prisons and locked every class B felon up for life. They're going to get out. The question is, how do we how do we best control that behavior? And quite frankly, sending technical violators to prison is the biggest recipe for disaster you can imagine. They come out, they go in as knuckleheads and come out as career criminals with no or very little hope very little future. Now, obviously, if somebody commits a serious crime, they're going to go to prison. Uh, but we're talking about people who, in, in beds that we don't have right now, 1,600 beds that we're letting criminals out because we're 1,600 times at least we've locked up knuckleheads who come out with a much higher recidivism rate and much more dangerous to our community. And so I agree with you that there's been bad policy set, and I'll, I'll take blame for it if that's what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, I have some other questions. You've got an amendment you passed that you would like no, to. I just want some information on the amendment. And that, I mean, my biggest concern okay. center question is, like I said, the governor and his proposed balanced budget. Well, I can, is, I can tell you. is 4.9%. That's so unrealistic. I mean, if you can't hit that in year two, we're certainly not hitting it right now. I don't know that any agriculture state out there is projecting 4.9% growth in year two. So you start these things, and there's no long-term uh, well, plan to fund these things other than we just hope the money comes. As Representative Tucker said, if the money's not there, it's going to be cut. If it's not effective, if there's not savings, there's going to be an implementation committee on this that you'll you'll be able to see, hey, the savings have not been there, and then I will look like a fool, and Herbs and Tucker will look like a fool, and we'll have to stand up and fade the heat, but we're very confident, based on what's happened in every state that's done this, that it will save money, and it'll save considerable money, and more importantly, probably, it'll divert people who are just ill and get them the help they need and keep them out of the criminal justice system and make it safer for everybody involved. Okay, we have some other uh, questions from committee members. Uh, 